So today's guest is Maxine Cunningham. She's an economist uh, turned environmentalist and turned tech startup founder. I started uh, my career as an investment banker and then economist, uh, worked as an environmental economist for seven years. So she's the CEO of Pick My Brain, uh, where she helped a lot of people out there to share more of their expertise. I want to go into peer-to-peer marketplaces. I want to build something that allows an environmental, economic, and social opportunity for others. And, you know, build meaningful conversation with the people out there, which could be the combination of free and paid. Uh, it could be private sessions, programs, speaking, masterclass, you can name it, you know, she have it. A conversation can pivotally change your life, either personally, professionally, economically, spiritually, a perspective shift. Her mission is actually to empower people to have more conversation with a lot of people out there so that they can grow, uh, you know, more creatively and intimately as well. So please welcome Maxine Cunningham. Hey, Maxine. Hi, I love that your intro video had Pick My Brain in it. <laughs> Yeah, first first of all, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Oh, uh, so good. It's so nice to be here. Thank you so much for hosting. Awesome, awesome. Well, Maxine, we would love to hear your backstory. Like, what was the journey like for you when you started out in this like whole like you know in the whole ecosystem in the whole world? So, like, tell us like walk us through a little bit of backstory how everything started for you. Okay. Um, so yeah, like you said, I started uh, my career as an investment banker and then economist, uh, worked as an environmental economist for seven years. And what made me shift from being an environmental economist to jump and give it all up to go for the startup was actually just like frustration in my job, which is typically where startup founders find their, yeah. their break. And my frustration boiled down to, um, you know, working for a really big environmental organization and just seeing some of the policies that we'd work on uh, get dismantled when a change in government would occur. And I just realized like how frustrating it is to put so much time, energy and effort into something so um, good for the world and for society only to have a governing or politics just decide, no, this isn't what I feel like I want to have and be able to have the power to dismantle it. And I thought, this is not how I want to have my impact. This is not how I'm going to be able to have my impact if if someone outside can can dismantle something that has so much credibility. And it yeah. was right around that time that um, Airbnb was just coming out of the gate. And I was one of the first probably thousand users of Airbnb um, because I was before Airbnb such a big couch surfer. I stayed on a lot of people's couches and hosted a lot of people on mine. And I just love this open door policy of inviting people into my home. And so when Airbnb came along, I was like, this is perfect. Cause I was always saying like someone should monetize this because most of my friends were actually really uncomfortable using couch surfing because it was free. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. And I said, okay, oh my gosh, someone came through and monetized it. And as I, became more involved in Airbnb and just watched the value that unlocked, I realized that they were actually probably going to provide more of an environmental, economic, and social good um, than any of the policies I had worked on. And they were going to do this internationally, and they were going to do this without having to work with government. And when I looked up and, and discovered, like, who started this company? Who were the founders of this company? And found that it was three founders that were my age. That was kind of all wow, I needed. Awesome to like, I was like, I, this is where I need to be. I want to do what they did. Um, and so I quit my job very quickly after that two weeks and um, told my CEO, I just need to, I want to go into this tech world. I want to go into peer to peer marketplaces. I want to build something that allows an environmental, economic and social opportunity for others. And so, yeah, I gave myself one year um, journey. Uh, I called it my year on. Um, I gave myself just as much money as I spent getting my master's and I set out on a path to study um, tech uh, and how do I make this transition from economist to tech and I onboarded into every peer to peer marketplace that I could find and I just gave myself a whole year of diving and following my passion and my intuition and just really thinking and it was on that journey that I started to ask myself and discover uh, the value of a conversation with someone and how much it, it fundamentally mm, started yeah. to pivot my life. And then I thought, 
as my house. Oh, I wonder if I could monetize knowledge and conversations in the same way that Airbnb monetized unused space. You know, there's a lot of unused knowledge in here. Um, and there's a lot of knowledge sitting in all of our minds that is unused. Um, could I apply that same concept um, that Airbnb applied to this idea of a knowledge and, and monetizing knowledge? And that's I, that idea just never left. I just kept being like, whoa, this is actually a very big idea um, and could solve a lot of problems. And as an environmentalist, there's no supply chain, no product, which was nice. And just so many things started to click in watching my mom retire and not know how to share her knowledge. Um, I myself wanted to reach out to a bunch of people and pick their brains and, and there wasn't a formal process to do so. And so it just the bug hit then and I just had focused and I just started to focus all my attention on how do I validate this? Um, how do I take this concept and scale it? Um, what is the outcome if I am able to reach my dream goal? of unlocking this knowledge economy and, and making it as normal to buy a conversation with someone as it is to buy a product online. And so that was really yeah, what yeah. was the, the transition in. <laughs> Wow, well, you know, this is actually amazing to know about the whole story, how everything started for you. And uh, yeah, like one thing that you mentioned is so true, like everything new or everything that changes something started from a certain frustration. You know, it could be anything. It yeah. could be for a job. It could be somebody who is like, you know, for me, I was in a university frustrated all the time, you know. So, yeah. so like, so what were the challenges in the initial start that you, you know, faced uh, while, while starting the venture initially so like what was the challenges you actually faced <laughs> unlimited number of challenges when you do a startup but um i'd say the biggest ones <laughs> are uh number one first of all you're doing something that you've never done before right i was like can i build a tool that allows anyone in the world to monetize a conversation and so just going from economist to someone who's building a tech stack um, I had a lot of language to learn and a lot to learn about building technology. Um, second, um, this was a new category, just like Airbnb struggled yeah. to convince early investors that strangers are going to want to stay in your home and that's going to work. I had to, you know, new category, where do you go and buy conversations that didn't really exist? Um, you know, it doesn't really exist in the form that we, we provide it. So I had to go and validate and, and try to find proof points that people are willing uh, to both um, share their knowledge for a fee and buy knowledge for a fee. So that was another challenge. And then of course, fundraising, right? When you just have an idea and you've never fundraised before and you're starting a company, convincing and finding those that have enough money to bet on something as risky as a startup and then convincing them when you don't have much credibility that this is going to be the next thing was another challenge. And then all the last yeah. one I'll say is, is when you build a marketplace, pick my brain is a marketplace. Airbnb is a marketplace. A marketplace is actually like three startups in one. It's like the hardest startup to create because you have to create demand, you have to create supply, and then you have to make sure that those two are in balance all the time. So it's cool. such a challenge. You got this like chicken and egg problem. Which one do I go get first? I got to go get the brains, but then I got to quickly go get the demand. Otherwise my brains are going to leave. And then I have to make sure forever going forward that there's balance on the marketplace. And so it's, it's even a four or five years into this journey that is still like going to be forever the challenge that a marketplace faces. So those four were our biggest struggle. And then of course your mindset just plays into all those. You got to be really confident um, that you've got legs, that you believe in this vision as much, you know, you got to transfer your belief in this vision as someone else. And you have to do so in words um, and you have to translate it in the language that the person perceiving it understands. So from an investor perspective, what is the economic value of this thing? Um, how yeah. is this thing going to scale? How much is it going to cost to scale it? Um, what is the initial traction, right? You got to just like find what they care about. So I'd say like those, those were the, the most challenging at the beginning and still are actually today. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Uh, for you to speak about like all the things out there that you actually faced, especially in the initial start out there, because I think that was, that is the hardest part, you know, when you actually want to do something out there, but you don't have the idea to do it. And yeah. then you have to acquire like so many skills in order to, you know, make those things work out and, you know, and all that. But, you know, since your whole, uh, you know, I would say like knowledge 
sharing and knowledge getting marketplace pick my brain is all about like creating meaningful conversation that could change anyone's life in any sort of way you know i, I really believe like even you know the purpose of these podcasts that we do is to get yeah. maybe like one golden nugget that could you know shift the whole mindset shift the whole true things out there i would love to know about what are the some of the most meaningful conversations you had that actually changed your life you know it it could be the business side it could be the personal one like, like what were some of those most ones yeah there's so many i could talk to any one of the thousand conversations i've had but yeah you're right like um a conversation can pivotally change your life either personally professionally economically spiritually a perspective shift and all yeah. of those things kind of stay with you forever. So I actually feel like conversations compound in such a powerful way as well. Um, I'll maybe identify three of, oh, it's so hard to pick, but I'm going to pick like a personal one, a professional one, and then maybe a, a serendipitous one that have sure. recently completely adjusted and pivoted my life path. Um, so I would say when I was first validating pick my brain and seeing if people would would pay for conversations. I actually went full circle back to Airbnb and they had just launched experiences. And so I used the experience marketplace to to make an offer. And it wasn't an experience as much as like a, a conversation for me to validate. And what I packaged was um, people could hang out with me. I said, hang out with a Vancouver startup founder um, and let's talk about your ideas. Let's talk about the future of work, the future of education, any ideas that you have. And I charged 55 Canadian dollars for that. And this was my validation point. Would people be willing to pay me, someone that wasn't well known, um, for this service of just a conversation about whatever? And I had 60 people who booked and paid me for that offer over the course of three months, um, which wow. validated the idea, put money in my pocket. And it was actually the first three conversations. All of those conversations adjusted my life. But the first three really proved and validated and, and allowed me to jump in to pick my brain fully. Um, and the first one was the first person that booked me actually booked me for a birthday gift for herself. She just immigrated from Brazil to Canada and she just wanted to talk to someone who had a network in Vancouver about what she was going to do next. Um, she ended up becoming pick my brain's first employee years later. And that changed oh, wow. my direction. The second person that booked me, um, ended up loving the concept and we had a great conversation and, and he ended up writing my first $50,000 check a couple months later. So he was the first investor and he had experienced the platform. Um, and then the third person that booked me, he was the CEO of a 30 of Canada's 30th fastest growing company. And um, we actually ended up falling in love <laughs> um, and had like this relationship for a number of years and he became like such a mentor for me and that changed the course of my life as well. So that one little experiment, those first three bookings proved to me again, the value of a conversation. And that months later, that one conversation, because when you have a conversation with someone, you don't forget them, you know, it's they're mm, in yeah. your life now and, and they all circled back and unlock doors later. So I always reference those three because they were the first three that validated first people would pay for this. Second, strangers can walk into my life and because of my offer, let's talk about these things. We were able to go very deep, very quickly. And then third, um, like the economic opportunities after the fact that came around later because of that connection. Um, but since then, the other two that I was gonna bring up was um pro professionally this one just recently happened and and we connected over this which is why we got to meet each other and are here today which is so funny because the yeah. company effects but someone saw me pitching in austin texas and they ended up booking a pick my brain call with me after because on pick my brain basically when you have a profile it basically is your signal to the world that hey i'm open and available so this person booked me we had a great conversation that conversation turned into multiple conversations um, a dinner and eventually an invitation to come to Pakistan. And that was a very, like Pakistan was not on my radar, right? For being from Canada, starting, like I, I didn't have in my life map ever. Totally different side of the world. To totally different side of the world, totally different like economy and culture. And yeah. I had no connection to that country. So like, I, I never thought I would go there. 
Um, but he made a quite a big pitch and said, like, you know, this is a developing country. What is your thoughts of bringing the knowledge economy into a developing country that typically doesn't have access to the rest of the world? And that intrigued me. And so I changed, again, the course of my life and flew to Pakistan and stayed there for two months learning about a developing country's transition into the knowledge economy, learning about how I could support um, people to gain access to other people from different countries and how that might want to change yeah. their life. So again, that conversation changed my life. And then I ended up going to Dubai and then, you know, now I'm going to have a company in Dubai. There's just like so many things that unlocked because of that, that conversation. So I have to put that one on as like my most recent, like, whoa, random, like random, but like life changing. Um, and then I, I probably, I'll pull a personal one in and the man I told you that I had fallen in love with, um, he really sadly passed away um, quite unexpectedly at 33 and I was really hit with grief. I was like, I never experienced loss like that before. And so um, my family couldn't really get through to me. It was like the first time I was like really like shook um, on a level that I just had never experienced. And I just was like, what am I going to do? And I thought, you know, there's actually a Holocaust survivor on Pick My Brain. And I was like, you know, if anyone understands grief, this emotion that I'm feeling that nobody has really educated me on, right? We don't learn how to deal with grief in school, even though we're all going to go through it. Yep. I was like, maybe she understands. And so I went and used my own platform. I went back to pick my brain and I booked a session with this Holocaust survivor. And I said, her name was Yoka. And I said, Yoka, I told her my story. And I just said, I'm like so heartbroken. And I'm like, beyond, like, I don't know how to deal with this. Like, how did you deal with like losing your entire family and living through like the worst, you know, the worst of the worst? Like, what was, what was that like? Like super vulnerable questions. And she, she said something that, pivotably changed my relationship with grief. And she had just mentioned like, Max, I'm so jealous of your pain. And I said, what? Like no one had ever said that to me. I was like, why? I like can't get out of bed. I can't do anything like this is the worst. And she said, you know, love and gr love and loss, like they're so parallel. Like if the, the amount you love someone is the amount you're gonna feel the loss. And so that grief is just another manifestation of the love. And so if you could in your mind approach and accept that grief as just another form of love. It's just a different feeling where we're, we're scared to feel pain. Um, just try that. And, and from that conversation and her saying that I adjusted my relationship with this pain and like started to accept it and started to explore it and started to like be so amazed by its power instead of like dismantled by it. And that was, again, just like a conversation with someone who is a complete stranger turned my entire relationship with grief. Within 30 minutes, she chiropractically shifted my entire relationship with this new emotion. And it allowed me so that I, I, I got to say, like, that was one of the another one. I, I mean, I could talk to you for three hours about the conversations I've had that have like shifted my mind and opened travel opportunities and business ideas but i'll stop at those ones just to give you an idea that it can be it can be personal in terms of like shifting your mindset it can be professional in terms of like unlocking a new country to travel to or an investment opportunity or an employee um yeah it's like it's quite a range which makes it difficult because it's like not so black and white it's not a plus b equals c it's like Go have conversations with the world's people and things will happen to you personally, professionally, and spiritually that I can't quite articulate other than you will grow, your perspective will expand, will expand and the opportunities that become available to you are going to broaden. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%. That's so true because uh, as you mentioned already, uh, the conversations you could have with the people out there that are strangers to you in the initial start, you know, could, you know, help you out in so many different areas of your life that you haven't had the idea of, you know, yeah. and yeah. it happens most of the time. Uh, but uh, since you already mentioned about the, that you came to Pakistan, which is amazing because that's where I saw you have, having yeah. the conversation on the panel and, and all that, you know, a lot of people out there actually 
struggles to have conversations with uh with strangers uh, still online you know uh, yeah. for people who are living who are working i would say who are the part of the digital space they're more kind of like get, getting used to it because selling is also part of the process you're having a conversation with somebody who's unknown and then you yeah. you know pre-frame them and you know to offer them what you have to sell but a lot of people still struggle to realize that hey you know we can have some meaningful conversations so like what's your thought on that and uh uh, obviously that's why pick my brain comes into play as well but what's your th- thought around that like hey you know a lot of people still struggles to have yeah. conversations with people who are strangers they do and um i mean pick my brain is a is a is a platform that hopefully makes that easier and the way that we make it easier is threefold um number 1 we give you complete permission that everyone in this database wants to have conversation with you i think that's the first hurdle is that reaching out to a complete stranger um, to have a conversation is already like, you're like, is that, is there permission to do that? And I'm already in an uncomfortable position asking. Um, So we're trying to take that away by being like all these thousands of people from all around the world signed up because they want to have a conversation with you. They want to share their knowledge. They are totally open. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So number one, permission is there. Number two, uh, we've built the profiles in such a way that give you enough contacts to have a deep conversation. Um, so when you read someone's profile, even there's there's even a per, per place on the profile where you can be like, ask this person these questions. This person can help you with these things. This is what this person knows a lot about. These are reviews that other people have left. So. And even with our, some of our students, we give them a list of questions to ask people that will change um, the conversation. And simply, I, I tell people, if you're nervous, here's how to break that nervousness. Go ask five people on Pick My Brain how they got to where they are. That's it. And just sit and listen yeah. for 30 minutes and you will learn. And then you will find within their story where you want to take it. You'll get to navigate I want to go down this track. I want to know more about how you traveled 40 countries. I want to know more about how you sold your company for a million. I want to know more about why you decided not to have kids. Da, 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 da. Right? That's what is the beauty of a conversation. You never quite have the same conversation twice with anyone. There's elements, of course, that are the same. But you, because it's live, because you and I are live talking, you can take this interview wherever you want and I'll follow. Right? You can drop questions and we'll go that way. Whereas if someone else interviewed yeah. me, it's going to be a different set of questions. Um, 100%. So, so start by, if you know that connecting with other people will expand your mind, but you're nervous, just like anything, you're nervous to go to the gym the first time to work out. But if you go to the gym with like a few exercises that you know what to do, you feel less intimidated at that gym. When you go to pick my brains gym, pick three people and ask them just how they got to where they are and get over it and like get over your fear and and have go in equipped with a question, read their profile and see what you feel. And then the third thing that we do is once a month, whether you're a brain on pick my brain or you've used it once a month, we invite all of our users to come to this global knowledge exchange once a month where we invite our entire community to this Zoom session. So we all log on to Zoom for a full hour. There's like hundreds of faces. And then we do three breakout sessions for a short period of time, 10 minutes each. And we give you the question. We're like, okay, um, you're gonna jump into a room with someone and I want you to ask that person what they're working on. you know. And then we do another session. Okay, I want you to ask that person how how much how much do you make a year or how, what do you, what is your feelings on money and, and what is enough? Um, and then I'm going to get you to jump in a room with a couple people. And we're going to talk about a world relevant problem that's going on. So again, that builds up this confidence of we'll equip you with the conversation. It'll just be a short stint. And then after that session, we always say, like, listen, if you met someone that like sparked your brain, go further, go book them, go, go have another one. So just like anything, like again, like we want to convince students, students are actually really nervous to go and ask exactly. people questions, but it's, it's like the greatest avenue to understanding who you are and what you want to be. So giving all those students, like how can we at Pick My Brain make it so comfortable for any student to feel equipped, to feel purposeful, to feel confident of having a conversation with a world-class expert about, you know, 
I'm so, I'm in school, I'm studying this, I don't know if I wanna be this, can you just share with me your experiences? You know, I want students to know that they can just do that with anyone. And again, in doing so, start to figure out this thing called life, right? It's like, you, it's exactly. just like, it's everyone is, it's, it's, there's no pressure here. It's like, talk about anything, do anything with someone. Everyone has lived experience. Um, so those are kind of the three ways that we try to make it easier for introverts or people that are uncomfortable. Um, and then we feel like once they feel it, once they do it, they're like, oh, wow. You know, they get kind of a little addicted and then we create challenges. Like we have a, we're just about to launch a meet the world's people challenge where we challenge the world to meet 10 new people over the course of a year. And we just introduce you to all the people who you can meet. And we promise like if you do this challenge, we'll give you a certificate and you will, we're going to interview you after that experience to see what you learned. Right. And then hopefully those messages yeah. will communicate to more people and more people will take that challenge. And pretty soon we'll have millions of people taking that challenge where we go and meet the world's people, just like we do yoga for 30 days. You know, that's a challenge we all get behind sometimes. <laughs> so that's kind of yeah. how we, yeah, we support it and motivate people to do it. Well, that, that's awesome. And as you mentioned, like to get a better answer, you have to ask better questions and you actually yeah. build that platform to get a, a context or an idea about the person. Like this person is an expert of that, that, that thing. Uh, or, you know, yeah. you could book a call or pick a brain of that person out there. If you want to know about this, this, this stuff, go ahead and do it. Like, you know, that's amazing. So first of all, I will put up the link in the description down below, guys, uh, for Pick My Brain. If you want, want to you know, pick the brain. First of all, you can pick the brain of Maxine. If you go to pick my brain and sign up, you can uh, pick her brain and maybe ask your questions and like, you know, see how everything works around and like see the questions that you want to get answered for and see who are the possible brains that you can get book in a call for. It could be free or paid both uh, because you have to understand from one way or the other that it's all about getting your answers for your specific question if you can get your answers out there and can put uh, put you up like way ahead of the existing uh, you know hurdle that you have it's worth it you know so i'm going to post up the link in the description also in the show notes down below so you can be the part of it uh well uh, maxine first of all thank you so much for being on the show today out there uh any last thing that you want to say before we round the show up uh just like do yourself a favor and go book one person I'm just, just yeah. go to the database and browse again, thousands of people from 88 countries you can choose from, find someone that speaks to you personally, professionally, spiritually, other, and whether their pictures speak to you, whether their title speaks to you and just go and have a conversation. That's my biggest call to action. Just one and just analyze after before and after what, what you opened right? It's an intentional door that you're opening when you enter a conversation with someone like you and I are now going to have a, we have a relationship open. We have a portal yep. open. When you ask me anything in the future, I'm there, right? I'm there to like receive that because it's not a cold message. Um, and so, yeah, my, my biggest call to action always is just, just go of one, just commit to one. Everyone can do that. And if you really believe that um, diversity and understanding more perspective will allow us to understand one another better um, and will create more harmony, more collaboration, um, then, then, then more so go pick someone that's from a different country, from a different generation, from a different industry and put in the time to learning about the world's people, just like we do put in the time to travel the world. This one's just more accessible for most of us. Yeah. So that's my only always call to action is like go have a conversation. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, like definitely like people could go in and check that out in the comment section, also in the show notes. Well, Maxine, again, thank you so much for being on the show today out there. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're definitely going to see you guys in the next one. Until then, yeah. peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>